Greetings and welcome to the parallel session in track number one, uh, Humanities and Social Science, uh, theme three, Transformational Education Using Technology, Challenges and Benefits, and topic number five, Digital Divide. I am Professor Dr. Mohammad Mohanuddin uh, from uh, United International University, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and your session chair today. Um, in track number one, uh, humanities. So today we have uh, the speakers and they will have approximately, each speaker will have 15 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for the question answer session. If any speaker face any technical difficulties or could not present, then I will move to the next speaker in line and come back to the original speaker at the end. And during the presentation, I will uh, alert the speaker at five minutes and one minutes remaining time of their 15 minutes window through the Zoom chat. And exactly after 20 minutes, the next speaker will begin presenting. The attendees are requested to place uh, any question in the questions tab in Vertex chat. Now um, we have our speaker, Dr. Mujib Hassan. He will be uh, he will be presenting about digital divide of education in an OBE system. Before his presentation, let me introduce Dr. Mujib Hassan. Dr. Mujib Hassan is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Physics in. Lord's Institute of Engineering and Technology. He has completed his PhD in Department of Physics at the Indian Institute of Technology, Rorke, Rorke in the year May 2021. He has got his Bachelor of Science Honors in Physics, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, India, and Master of Science in Physics from the same university. Dr. Mujib Hassan has qualified graduate aptitude test in engineering, GATE in physics in 2015, AIR 177, qualified GAT in physics 2014 AIR 463. He has published six journal papers. He has three papers presented and published in proceedings of national and international conferences. He has attended nine international and national conferences. We're very happy to get Dr. Mujib Hassan speaking about the digital divide of education in an OBE system. Dr. Mujib Hassan, please carry on. The floor is yours okay. now. Thank you, Professor MD Mohan Uddin for the information. Good evening to one and all. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer of the IN for OBE Global Virtual Summit 2020. 2022 for giving me an opportunity to discuss my views on this topic. And especially I would like to thank Professor William Spady sir, as well as Professor Dr. Vajis sir for giving me an opportunity to discuss my views. So as you have seen, my topic for today's session is digital divide of education in an OB system. And the theme of my topic is the transformational education using technology challenge and the benefit. So these are the outlines. So I would like, love to start with the impact of technology on education and overview. Then I would be talking about the digital divide of education, then the OB, the main theme, and ICT in OB, then digital divide in OB, then the impact of digital divide in OB, and how to bridge this gap or the digital divide in OB. And finally, the summary of key points. So for, first of all, I would love to start with the impact of technology on education. So as you have seen that the technology had made the learning easy, interactive, and interesting. So it have an impact on the student as well as the teacher. So you can see if we use the positive impact of a technology, we can increase the productivity as well as the efficiency of a teacher. And for the concept or for, from the side of teacher, the teacher can upload its lesson or the lecture on learning management systems so that the student can easily access the notes as well as the uh, relative information regarding some topic or some course. So it also reduces the cost of schooling. It encourages most communication between teachers and the parents. 
technology helps the preparation of the peoples for their future life. So finally, we can conclude that the impact of technology plays a vital role in teaching and the learning process. Okay, so in continuation of this, we can have, or we can simply have the positive effect of eugenic technology in the form of cognitive skill. One thing where we can simply enhance the quality of the student by using these three factors, thinking, remembering, as well as the problem solving. So if we have the positive impact of technology on education, we simply have the great mind, or we will be simply having the great learners. So, but with that, I would want to quote this quote, the technology will never replace great teacher, but in the hands of great teacher, it is transformational by this man. Now we have to look for the digital divide of education. What do we mean by the digital divide and how it's impacting the education sector? So digital divide basically refers to the gap between the individuals who have access to the information and communication technology and those who lacks access. So from these figures, it is clear that the person or the student who don't have the easily accessible to technology, they are lagging behind in the education. Okay. So the next one is, these are the factors which basically constitute to the digital divide of education. One is the economic one, the social one, the geographical one, the fear of technology in the lack of motivation and the culture. If we have these kind of factors, so we can basically have the digital divide or the digital divide will increase. Now, so before I just move further to the main topic, which is the digital divide in an OB system, we have to look very briefly about what is OB is mean. So it will be injustice if I don't mention the name of uh, the father of outcome-based education, the William G. Spady Sir, who basically his attempt enhancing the quality of the education ecosystem by introducing outcome-based education have indeed brought a revolutionary change. What is the meaning of OB? In OB, we have to look for the program outcome. Then we have to look for the course outcome. And from that, we have to look for the course specific outcome. And finally, we have to see for the student learning outcome. This is the main thing. So outcome-based education consists of various factors. First, we have to discuss the student learning outcome, then the program course content, then the teaching learning strategy, then the student learning activity, as well as the assessment. So basically, this is simply an overview of outcome-based education. Now, in order to have the outcome-based education or the greater enhancement of outcome-based education, we have to look for the tool. And what are the tool? The tool is nothing but the ICT, the information and communication technology, which basically give an enhanced to outcome-based education. So as we have seen, the outcome-based education focuses on ability procured by the learners or the quality education which empower the society can be achieved through information and communication technology in teaching learning process. The ICT tools in OB can effectively accomplish the goals of quality education, which is a process that reduces consumption of resources and increases learning outcome. And, we, and easily by using a good ICT tools, we can have a good amount of information or good amount of education. So if we look for a traditional medium of learning, we have the lectures or we only have, only have the books. But if we use the main or the positive ICD medium, we have the computers, multimedia, internet, lectures, et cetera. So there will be a shift, paradigm shift if we use the ICT. We have a shift from factory model of education to broadcast model of education. And finally, we have a shift from teacher-centered learning to learner-centered learning, which is the main aim in the outcome-based education system. So now, before we discuss the digital divide in OBA system, what is the meaning of this? As we have seen the main tool is the ICT. So the inequality in access to the internet and ICT is known as the digital divide in education. And it affects 50% of the women and 42% of the men worldwide. This gap even increase when we talk about regions or we can divide in terms of the regions. So this is the data which I have taken from the internet portal as of December 2021. This is the map which basically shows the number of users or the number of users of internet users from different countries. So as you can see from this figure, it is clear that in North America, 93.4% households or individuals are using internet or they are easily accessible to internet. However, in Africa, this number is, this percentage is very low, 43.1%. So it means the 47.6% 
a household or the population are not having the proper access to internet it means the this there is a wide difference or the digital divide is there because of the less number of internet users okay so this is in context of the india so as we already witness uh, this deadly coronavirus so because of the this uh, coronavirus we have a impact of digital divide on school education during the covid 19 pandemic in india this is the research which is basically happened in india so because of this covid 19 we have seen that the at least 30 million indian kids had no way of attending online school during the pandemic or school closure means the digital divide basically increases because of the covid so now after this we have to look for the impact of digital divide in an ob system this is again the research so there are the various factors one is the access to internet enabled devices so this is the statement or this is the real experiment uh, that has been taken in different states in india so uh, the statement from this teacher is that almost all the kids in my school are from slum and they don't have the devices or any internet facility and the next effect is the unavailability and unreliability of mobile data network again this teacher from maharashtra he has said that the student used to travel to dangerous mountain terrains to access network. As there was no network in their village, it was risky and we were scared to let the kids go like this. Finally, the last factor, or I have just named a very few, the affordability of mobile data. So uh, this teacher from Pune, he basically said, our pre-pandemic school hours were five hours, but this turned out to be impossible to carry out online because parents complain and their entire data plate would get over in a single day. And it gets too costly for them to recharge everything. So it means there is a divide is, is there. This is the impact of digital divide in education as well as in OB. Okay, so problem is there. Now we have to address the solution. Now, how we can simply bridge this gap? for the development of the country. So basically these are the various factors. I simply name very few of them. There are various N numbers of factors which basically help to bridge this gap. One, we have to discover ways to expand information infrastructure. The second one, we have to reduce the cost of service for internet access. We have already seen in the previous example that because of the very high rate of internet, they are not easily accessible to ICT or the divide is there. The second effect or the third one is the provide cost effective and affordable solution. We have to look for that. And finally, we have to promote digital literacy by campaign as well as the incentive. And we have to look for, we have to work in a collaboration with successful entity and robust network. And we have to offer as per the university or college, we have to offer the wireless access in a study halls and library for the entire. If we can achieve this factor or if we can work on this factor, we can simply have, or we will simply improve the digital literacy capacity all over the world. Okay, so now these are the various uh, attempts to work around the access and affordability issue. This is basically the initiative taken by the Indian government or the individuals fund. So there are various examples. First one is from the state of Karnataka, where in absence of internet enabled devices and streaming bandwidth, the Karnataka government is starting running classes on TV channel. So somehow they are basically uh, just promoting to start or to basically connect or to reduce this divide. The second example is basically in order to reach areas with no internet and devices, some state even took up the path of teaching through radios. One successful such attempt happened in Nasik. Again, I stayed in India. In the last one, in Chalkan and Chhattisgarh, uh, the teacher taught over loudspeaker. And finally, the grade, because our country, we are having this digital India campaign. There are various schemes under this broad digital India campaign. And the aim of this is basically, we will build digital India by providing digital literacy skill to our or In somehow, we can simply reduce this digital divide. Okay, so with this, I would like to conclude the summary and the key point is, Digital divide is there in an education system or in outcome business system. So if somehow we can simply reduce this divide and we have to connect all the schools, college, hospitals, individual household to with a easy and cheap internet connection, we can simply achieve the digital equity. And what is the meaning of digital equity? The condition in which all individuals and community have the information capacity 
needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and the economy. So they have they can somehow contribute to the development of the country just by having but just by having this digital equity. Now, if we somehow achieve, and if we we wish for this digital equity to achieve throughout the world. So then only we can achieve the aim of outcome-based education. What is the aim of outcome-based education? The outcome-based education is a theory that bases education around the pre-defined goal. We have to look for the outcome or we have to look for the learner's outcome. So if the student will continue in this way and the teacher will guide them in that way, so by the end of education experience, each student expected to have achieved that particular goal. This is the main aim of outcome-based education. So we have to reduce the digital divide for the development of the country, for the development of any nation, or for the development, or finally, we have to achieve the idea of the uh, William Spady, sir, the father of OB. He is basically working on this. We have to look for the outcome-based education. So with this, I would like to conclude by saying that the all students deserve access to an education that prepares them to succeed outside the classroom. The student, they have various aim. In order to achieve that aim, they have to look for the outcome. So in that sense, they can achieve their goals. So with that, these are the references that I have used to prepare this slide. And finally, I would like to thank all for listening. Now, this is up to you. So I am ready to answer your query and your question. So, Professor Dr. Amar Mohiuddin, sir. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. The time is up, so. Uh, no, the time, uh, you still have time, but uh, marginally oh. up. It's okay. Uh, okay. You still have one minute time, but uh, that is not a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we have not, we have, uh, we are yet to receive questions from the attendees. Okay. But by this time, uh, maybe I can also, uh, I, I'm also curious to discuss something with you. Oh, sure, uh, sir. Uh, so you have said that. Uh, uh, well, uh, you have discussed very nicely about uh, about the digital divide um, in the implementation of OBE, right? Uh, and uh, we can see in reality, we have the digital divide, isn't it? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. In, really. in, your, in your opinion, how can the policy makers uh, maybe may come forward? You know, they are definitely mm. coming forward, but uh, maybe how can they enhance their mm. effort to reduce the digital divide um, okay. uh, among the students, different classes of students, uh, so mm. that we can implement the OBE um, and we really uh, effectively achieve the objective, the learning objectives of different educational programs. Okay, okay. Actually, sir, one thing, one of the most important thing, we have to reduce the cost of internet. If we have the accessible internet, then only we can have the ICT tools or the student or the learner, they can basically use the ICT tool. Once they are easily using the ICT tool, that's why we have this Digital India campaign, for example, in the context of India. So the idea after this is that we have to use or we have to make the internet in a very cheaper way so that each and every individual they are having the internet connection in their hands by their mobiles by their various devices so i just want to give an example if you look for the 80s in 80s only one percent of the population throughout the world having the this broadband connection now as the time passes so they are basically expecting by the year of 2028, still we are having 50% of the overall population having the internet access. So they are basically achieving this complete divide by 2028. We wish that we can achieve. So we have to look, we have to work in a collective man, not by individual man. We have to just talk throughout the country, throughout the globe, within our country, we have to look, we have to look, for, already there are various programming. They are doing it, but because of this deadly coronavirus, this divide is already increased because of this unwanted situation. Hope we can simply, if we don't just, we'll get this in near future and we can simply overcome this problem. I wish for that only. Uh, yes, thank you, I understand. 
Um, mm. Actually, it is uh, you have you have said about reducing the internet cost, but uh, yeah, that is that is a very important thing. Not only interest cost, device issue is there, hardware exactly. issue is there, yeah. Mm. Uh, and also, you know, uh, definitely the market force will play because um, if you, even if you want to reduce the cost, may, maybe government will have to give um, uh, subsidy or something mm. like that. Exactly. Uh, so mm. it is a matter of priority from the mm. policy makers. Uh, I agree with that. Mm. Uh, well, uh, so uh, how do you see Maybe if you, if you don't mind, I can raise another point. Hmm. Sure, sir. Why not? <laughs> yes, sir. So how do you how do you see uh, in terms of the policymakers effort effort in our continent, like uh, Southeast Asia or South Asian context, and also okay. versus the European or American hmm. context? Do you see any hmm. significant difference uh, of the policymakers regarding uh, reducing the digital divide? Uh, actually, sir, right now I don't have any about uh, idea about this. I have to look for that actually. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of uh, this global virtual summit. I'm happy to have been one of the uh, resource persons to speak at this August event. My name is Dr. King James Coombe. I am uh, a lawyer and also a university lecturer who doubles as the Deputy Dean Faculty of Law at the Taraba State University in Nigeria. I lecture law courses and other relevant social, so, social sciences uh, related courses. And so um, today I have the honor of speaking on the topic, digital divide, uh, a global context. Uh, my, my business basically is to discuss the phenomenon of digital divide uh, in, globally as it affects education, transformational education, and I will be looking at how it relates to uh, tech, how technology, uh, the div digital divide in technology relates to educational development and how uh, the benefits and the prospects of uh, digital uh, technology in advancing education, basically. So uh, technological advancement actually, as a matter of fact, has advanced over the years uh, uh, thanks to the internet connectivity, the, the advent of internet some decades ago. And of course, uh, it, is, it is common knowledge that the internet and the internet of things and everything that has to do with online, uh, online uh, dealings has become a part and parcel of our existence. Virtually everything has become in, uh, internet based. As a matter of fact, this, this uh, conference or this summit is made possible uh, because of internet you know, penetration. Uh, you know, we are online because of this. And so everything has become internet uh, based. And so because of that, there is a need to embrace that. And so uh, unfortunately, as, as we speak, over half of the world population are not connected, do not have internet access. As, as of 2021, United Nations report uh, states that over 3.7 billion people on the face of the earth do not have access to internet. Now, the deficiency in digital connectivity, uh, especially within the less developed countries, with over 80% of the population still offline, means that uh, something has got to be done. Comparatively, if we look at it uh, between the developed and underdeveloped countries, uh, it is in a ratio of 13 to 57, respectively. That is a huge gap. So talking about digital divide, this is not just related, related to relation to education, but as it affects every sector of human endeavor, as far as uh, the, the digital or online presence is concerned. So, uh, but I will be narrowing down to digital divide as it concerns education, uh, basically, uh, in this brief discussion. Historically, uh, digital divine education refers to the gap that exists between, you know, it has to do with insufficient knowledge, the gap between knowledge and access to technology, you know, uh, and those without it. Now, following the advent of the computer, uh, computer discovery or, or, you know, advent in 1976, it is today uh, in, in record that 72% uh, record has been achieved 
from 1984 to 2015. Of course, the introduction of email, vi uh, video, and other digital technology has made, you know, the adoption or migration of education from the, the, the analog goes means to digital format possible today. And because of that, it is possible we, we are able to achieve uh, a, a migration, you know, educational development, educational, you know, uh, education being uh, projected online. So people have access to education online, all thanks to the advent in technology. And of course, increased emphasis on science and technology, engineering and mathematics STEM from the 2000s till date on all that. Of course, uh, it is also on record that 50% of low-income families in less developed countries lack technology required. They lack smartphone, tablets, computers, and all that. And in sub-Saharan Africa, 80% of learners lack access to computers and internet. So these are all uh, attributes, some of the issues uh, as far as digital divide is concerned. Uh, I will be talking about digital divide also with regards to the impacts on education. Now, one of the impacts is low performance, you know, low performance, competitive edge. Most some students have more access to this, and so they, they tend to fare better than convenience in learning. These students also have, they are more, co more convenient. They could learn with, within the confines of their, their rooms or their houses without much stress. Of course, there's also different learning uh, experiences. Students uh, within low-income areas or less developed countries find it more difficult to, to learn because of lack of access to internet and inter and, and, and gadgets or technology. And because of all this, some are, there are some of the causes to all this. One of the causes of the digital divide is uh, cultural or language barriers. Now, this has to do with uh, inability to understand the tech languages. Some countries, some, some, some students, some teachers find it hard to assimilate, to understand or to communicate uh, on, in the language of computer. Computer is basically most of the time formatted in the English language. And so some areas, some countries, some regions uh, I grapple with the possibility of understanding the language so as to also understand the, the context in which you know, they, they learn online. Now, poverty is another factor, you know, lack of uh, or insufficient fund and weak ICT and telecommunication infrastructure all contribute a result of poverty, which contributes to digital divide. Of course, an inefficient and corrupt bureaucracy is another factor. Where you have uh, a corrupt leadership, a corrupt government, uh, it becomes a problem because the media funds are being siphoned. You know, we have, like in Africa, we have a phenomenon where leaders are corrupt and uh, they tend to siphon the resources meant for, for education. The UNESCO recommends 26% of, of annual budget for education, but you hardly have up to 10%. Most of the times it, it, it rotates between five to six to seven to eight, at maximum is eight to nine. You hardly even have 10%. Now what is some of these monies that are meant for uh, education should have been used to provide internet, to provide resources, to provide facilities for students to learn. But because of they are being siphoned or diverted, they're, they're, it becomes another issue. Another cause could be government, these government regulations, some laws, which makes it difficult for penetration. Of course, potential funders find it hard to, to provide access to digital you know, um, platforms because of this. Now, how, do, how can this gap be closed? One of it is by provision of affordable, robust uh, broadband internet service, availability of internet enabled devices that can meet the needs of the users, access to digital literacy. Now there's a need to train teachers, to train students on how to use digital gadget devices and all that, because that digital literacy is another factor that's missing. We need quality technical support from advanced countries who can provide support in one way or the other applications and online content design to enable or and encourage self-sufficiency, participation and collaboration. Of course, survey is also needed for families most impacted by digital divide. With this survey, we can be able to, uh, to provide data that can help in solving the problem of divide. Of course, there's also a need to create conversation with leaders about how to fund additional resources. There are so many other factors, including there's a need to look at the schools and evaluate their needs on the basis of what 
they, they require is a need to connect with potential donors and technological companies about digital resources partnership. So schools, universities can partner with uh, companies and, and uh, uh, industries or companies that provide, can provide digital resources, whether internet, whether uh, gadgets, and all that to be able to you know, uh, meet or bridge that gap. Of course, there's also need to create a plan with education agencies on how to bridge the gap long term. That, that, that is, uh, what I mean, most of what I mentioned are short term, but there's a need for a long term plan. With all this in place, this gap can be closed within a minimum of say five to 10 years. It's actually more of political will. If there is a will, then there is a way. Thank you.